Hi again then guys and welcome to the first episode of yet another new game that we're going to be featuring on the channel from this week forward. One of at least nine games to be featured on the channel this week, possibly even ten, we're going to see how it goes. And this one is of course another instalment in the Forza franchise, Forza 4 in particular. And I would say that Forza 4 is the best Forza game overall as far as I'm concerned, especially given that the console that it was on wasn't as advanced as the Xbox One, but it's still a fantastic game, it's got tons of cars, and there are so many cars on Forza 4, which have never been featured since, and more often than not, never featured before. There are a ton of awesome cars on that game, which I would really love to see return. And what better way to start our Forza 4 reviews than with one of, if not the most beautiful LMP prototypes, not just in the game, but also ever made in real life as well. For modern LMPs, very little, I would say, comes close to how good-looking this car is. And it's a shame, because people don't talk about this car all that much. The Aston Martin Lola LMP machine, it's a 2.5 million credit car, it's R1 class, of course, 989, which does make it one of the highest categorised LMP cars in the game, in fact. You can very easily get it up to the highest class of 999, and in terms of what you get from the car, even in its stock form, if you will, you're looking at a 5.9 litre V12 engine, which is a huge engine for an LMP car to have, and that V12 engine is good for 653 horsepower and 516 pound-feet of torque. Now, as you'd probably assume from an LMP machine, especially a mid to late 2000s one, you're looking at 900 kilos as its curb weight. So it's a little bit heavier than the absolute latest LMP cars, but not by much. It's basically the weight that you would often think of an LMP as being. 900 kilos. And as such, with already a very high power output, it produces 726 horsepower per tonne straight out of the crate. Now when you de-restrict the engine, you can get it much higher than that. As I said earlier, you can easily get it up to 999, and the performance is very good. The fact that the engine is naturally aspirated gives it a very nice response. It's much higher revving, much more of a screamer and a howler than, say, the diesel rivals from Peugeot and Audi in particular. But at the same time, it doesn't sacrifice the kind of sheer straight-line grunt that you might associate having a turbo aspiration with. This is not a slouch just because it's a naturally aspirated car. Not at all. It's real fast. The top speed, if memory serves, is in excess of 235, with longer gearing and low downforce. That's more than good enough to take on plenty of other prototypes, including the Cadillac, the Panos, and a number of others as well. In fact, that's more than good enough to keep up with almost all of the other prototypes, apart from, say, the big two of the Porsche 962 and the Mercedes Sorber C9. There might be one or two others that can outrun it, but not much. Not much at all. This is a, an extremely fast prototype in the R1 category and the top 999 level, although that's, of course, not as useful overall. And so, of course, that begs the question, can it top off this seemingly brilliant all-round package of fantastic looks, equal pricing to its best rivals, a fantastic big capacity, naturally aspirated V12 engine, almost supercar-esque, in fact, in that regard, and great straight-line performance with good handling? Can it add that to the mix and really make it almost a perfect LMP car? Well, I'm happy to say, yeah. It sure can. Now, I'm not going to say that the Lola is the best LMP car in the game for handling, because that's not completely true. There are probably some others which, well, in fact, there are definitely some others which can outmaneuver it. Something, for instance, like the Acura ARX 01B or even the 02A can quite easily outmaneuver this car on technical circuits. But where the Lola really comes into its own are tracks such as here at Lasart, but also Tracks which allow it to have a lot of high-speed flow. Say the Nordschleife, for instance, or Catalunya. Those are tracks, or Mugello as well, as an example. Those tracks which have a very healthy amount of mid- to high-speed sections with fast, high-flowing corners, and you don't really go slow at any point around the track. Whereas other circuits, they're very much a start-stop affair. Something like, for instance, Laguna Seca, where there are definitely some corners that you have to basically slow right down to take them, like hairpin corners, for instance, or a city circuit. This car would be not bad by any means around those tracks, but it could definitely be outmaneuvered by a Peugeot 905, 
a 787B, the Acuras that I mentioned earlier. So it can be beaten for cornering, of course, but on tracks where it can really take on those big dogs like the Peugeot 908, the Audi R10, a variety of others, even something like a Sorba C9 or a Porsche 962, it can take those on as long as they're not allowed to use their absolute top end speed. So for instance, here at Le Mans, with the chicanes, it stands a much better chance, whereas without the chicanes, the old school circuit, well, then it will struggle to keep up. But overall, this is a superb rival to, I would say, any of the other prototypes in the game. It's one of my favourite prototypes on Forza 4, and this is a car which, unfortunately in real life, if memory serves me correctly, it had a really good performance run in the Le Mans, but its suffering was fuel economy because it is a petrol, as you'd assume, and going up against the diesels, it just had that huge disadvantage. So it is unfortunately a victim of its own technology, but at the same time, I should imagine this was a great crowd pleaser, in a similar way to the Panos, and I love this car. It's a gorgeous car, it sounds fantastic, the handling is smooth, but also very precise and very sharp. It's extremely fast in a straight line. The top end speed is more than good enough. The acceleration is very responsive because there's no turbo lag, and all the power and torque is there right when you need it. The engine, of course, loves to be worked hard as well, being a high revving V12, and the car's just a pleasure to work with. So if you do get the chance to go back and play Forza 4, this is most definitely one of the cars to check out. It's one of the best cars in the game, one of my favorite cars in the game, and it's a real shame that this car has kind of faded out of almost all, if not all, current racing games, because it's such a good prototype. And it's a car which, for some strange reason, is easy to forget just how cool a car it is. But that is it overall for this initial review from Forza Motorsport 4. And of course, we will be featuring far more, far more of these reviews in coming weeks alongside Forza 2, Forza 3, and various other Forza games from Horizon and the Motorsport section as well. But that's it overall for this review. I'll see you guys next time. And as always, thanks for watching.